Welcome to Test 2 Plus, everyone. I'm Trace Dominguez. This is where we take a really deep dive into topics in science. This week we're talking about Mars, and today we want to know, why do we love Mars so much? Hey, Internet, I'm Trace Dominguez. You may have seen me over on D News talk about science, and we are going to do that here, too. But we get a lot of requests to really explore topics, get really deep into stuff. And we don't always get the chance on D News because it's so short. So here we are. It's just going to be you and me. I don't have a script. I've got some notes here. We're just going to be off the cuff, hanging out, learning together. And this week, we're going to talk about Mars. Mars is so cool. And it kind of always has been. Mars was discovered in antiquity. That's what astronomers speak for. We've kind of always known it was there. We looked up into the sky when there was no electric lights and there were stars everywhere, but there was this one really bright one and it was bright red. So of course we're going to notice it. Cultures throughout history have associated Mars with, with war and death because, you know, it's red. Makes sense. It was studied by ancient scientists throughout all of our history, BC and AD. Uh, I don't know if we say BC and AD anymore, but whatever. BCE, CE. There are different ones. Tycho Brahe, for example, was a Danish astronomer. He made accurate calculations of Mars's positions as early as 1576. That's a while ago. And they knew how Mars orbited the sun at that point. Guys with names like Copernicus, Kepler, Hudgens, all looked at Mars. They all made an impact because of studies that they did with Mars. Sure, they're known for other things, too. But Mars was kind of the jewel of the astronomy crown for a long time. Jupiter is very famous because it's so big and there are so many moons. But Mars is our closest neighbor. It was named after gods. Greeks named it Ares. And then they were conquered by the Romans, so it got its current name, Mars, which all the planets in our solar system are now named after Roman names. But Mars was the god of war. It was just really valuable to culture throughout our history. Victorian scientists studied Mars. Uh, Giovanni Schiaparelli observed Mars in the 1870s, and he thought, my God, there are canelli on Mars, or whatever. But it's funny because they aren't actually canals. So canali was mistranslated into canal. It actually means channel. So what Giovanni was looking up and thinking, oh, this is a channel on Mars. It's something that may have been a natural formation. It probably was already there. It wasn't built by a Martian necessarily, but when it was translated into English, Americans and other Westerners thought, oh my God, this guy is saying that there's aliens that are building canals on Mars, and look at his maps of these very straight lines, which were not drawn by him. So American Percival Lowell, who founded the Lowell Observatory, by the way, was one of those who thought it was a canal, and he actually spread that myth far and wide, which is why it's still kind of around today. You see those pictures of canals on Mars, and they're, they're not real, and no one thought they were real who, act, well, people did, but the guy who discovered them didn't think they were real, which is kind of telling. Science fiction took Mars, and they ran with it as well. Again, it's been something that's just kind of been our, in our consciousness for so long. The Princess of Mars, which became that smash hit John Carter, that was based on Lowell's and Schiaparelli's canals and the existence of people living on Mars. And it was one of those awesome early science fiction books that really changed the genre. As soon as the moon was achievable, though, Mars kind of seemed within reach, too. I mean, in the thousands of years that humans had been looking up at the sky, we'd seen this bright red planet, and now we'd come to the closer big silver one. So why can't we get to the next closest one? Mars. It makes everything get smaller, right? You fly around the Earth in an airplane, Earth seems smaller. You go to the moon, the universe seems a little smaller. You go to Mars, what is that gonna do? It's gonna be pretty awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody, and please hit subscribe. It is the best way to make sure that our next episode makes its way to you. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about what we humans will gain from going to Mars. Thanks again. We'll see you in the comments.